Hello friends, it's Kat from Meow Meow Kapow. If you aren't already familiar with the Animal Artists Collective, check out the doobly-doo down below to hit up our social medias and do stuff like find out how to vote on our next themes, or who all these crazy YouTubers donating proceeds from their art sales to charity are, and how to participate as well. Plus, I've got all the materials from a project listed down below, as well as where you can buy it, and links to my charity of choice, the Schuylkill Center for Environmental Education. It's a local organization that I'm super into and hope to bring y'all on a tour with me too, someday. So anyway, the theme this month was insects, and I have no idea what came over me when I decided this, but I chose scare beetles as my subject. And because you know I can never do something for these AAC videos that's normal, I decided to make a custom watercolor palette using M. Graham and Daniel Smith paints. In fact, I chose to make three palettes, one for myself and two for sale. The only thing I really knew about scarabs is that they're widely used in Egyptian imagery, though I wasn't really sure what their purpose was. So the colors in the palettes themselves are inspired by Egyptian themed pop culture as well as scarab beetles themselves. It turns out that scarabs cover a wide range of beetles that come in all kinds of gorgeous colors, including greens and blues and purples and sort of golden colors. So in addition to making sure that a glorious rainbow of mixes could be made with these paints, I also made sure to include a half pan of gold watercolor to stick with the theme. From what I've seen, gold is used pretty heavily in Egyptian works, but especially so when portraying these beetles. It turns out because scarabs were often observed spontaneously rising from within the ground, they were thought to represent rebirth or regeneration, and therefore represent God. Specifically the sun god Ra, since the rising of the sun and the rising of the beetle were both seen as signifiers of life. This also means that scarabs were used in death rituals and imagery as well, because if you think about it, well, if you could pray to a bug that your loved ones be reborn safely, and knew in your heart of hearts that the scarab would protect their souls and guide it to the next life, wouldn't you embrace beetle statues and jewelry at funerals as well? Now, this is all well and good, but I have a very important and serious topic to discuss with you about scarab beetles today. Farts. You know, toots, past gas, cut cheese, booty bomb, rectal turbulence. Yeah, people, we're talking about flatulence today. You see, a couple of weird things lined up perfectly for me to make me think about bug farts for this video. Remember that first AAC project I did with the oysters from Alice in Wonderland? Remember that super secret environmental scientist that ended up being a guest to tell us all about brackish waters and why oyster populations indicate the health of an area? Stick with me for a second. So I was at PAX Unplugged, a yearly board game convention in Philly. By chance, one of my sisters was able to come as well, and we spent a large portion of the day just hanging out and talking about nonsense. It was great. One of the things that we talked about was that I had no idea what I was going to do for my upcoming AAC video, but that I was pretty sure I wanted to do something with scarabs, even though I knew nothing about them at all. I mean, half the fun of these is that I learn a bunch along the way. By chance, during a break in our conversation, she picked up her phone and just started laughing. That super secret environmental scientist of great glory is a family friend, and my sister happened upon an article that they had shared about whether or not bugs fart. And, dear friends, we would not be having this discussion if it turned out that bugs don't fart. Sure, they're more likely to pass in a silent but deadly way, which is actually literally true for some species who are able to kill other creatures with the power of their stank booty. But, quite a few species of insects do have the bacteria in their guts that we associate with flatulence. While probably the most famous fartin' bugs are apparently termites, scarab beetles are well-known contenders as well, which in my head is super giggle-worthy when you imagine just a couple of scarabs sitting around their living room watching a movie and pretending not to be the one who dealt it, but who certainly still smelt it. But it's also interesting when you consider that Egyptian symbolism of scarabs, being that they are related to death and life and now also farts, because when a body decomposes, it releases gases and stinks up a storm. Just like scarabs. Although the jury is still out as to whether or not most bug farts actually stink since they're so tiny in comparison to human toots that their scent is mostly undetectable. Also, as a related side note, scarab beetles covers a very broad grouping of different species of beetles, including the dung beetle, which, I mean, come on, guys, it's a poop beetle and we're talking about farts. How did I not know this all already? So yeah, I guess someone should write a follow-up book to Everybody Poops called Everybody Farts, Even Bugs. As for this project, it's a three and a half inch square metal custom watercolor palette with six colors inside, including five from M. Graham and one from Daniel Smith. So if you've wanted to try M. Graham paints, this may be a good time to do so. 
The colors are quinacridone rose, quinacridone rust, Indian yellow, anthraquinone blue, cobalt violet, and iridescent gold. The only one that's from Daniel Smith is the gold, everything else is M. Graham. I've also included a Kuretake water brush and little water reservoir, which both technically fit inside the palette tin itself, though you do have to squish the bottom portion of the bottle in since it can't be fully extended inside the tin. There's a little sliding pocket on the underside of the palette that has small swatches as well as a mixing chart, so you're at least not flying blind with these colors. I personally love the shimmer that you get when you mix the gold in with the other colors since it's a transparent gold that enhances other paints rather than covering them up. Also, I painted a cute little stylized scarab beetle for the tops of the tins using the colors included. Don't worry, both of the ones for sale have been totally untouched. That's actually why I made myself one so I wouldn't be using or contaminating your paints. I used to be really precious about the cross-contamination of my paints, but then my desperation to just get the color on the page as quickly as possible whisked away all carefulness from me, and now most of my own personal palettes show signs of all the colors being intimately familiar with one another. Art has taught me a lot about fearlessness, I think, which may be a good thing. I used to think that my mistakes would kill me, so everything always had to be perfect, but maybe I've been carrying around a little scarab beetle in my soul, and I keep being reborn every time I think I finally met my maker. The little scarab painting itself has been sprayed pretty liberally and more than once with clear coat enamel, so it should be at least a little water resistant, though if you do end up taking this palette out and using it, I would expect for it to get dirty and well loved, and that's part of the joy of these things, I think, anyway. I don't know, where do you stand on the keeping things pristine versus letting them get a little trash debate? I used to try to keep everything perfect, but eventually learned to embrace the chaos of the universe and accept that... All scars just show how many adventures you've had and battles you've won, so it makes sense that a travel palette meant to leave and see the world may get a bit banged up. Oh yeah, if you've never tried rubber cement before, it's what I used to slap them scarabs onto this palette. That stuff is magic. I almost used my super glue instead, but then remembered that I had a bottle of rubber cement from back when I was a teacher, and not only is this stuff pretty inexpensive and lasts basically forever as long as you screw the lid on tight, it really does work like cement. You can stick pretty much anything together with it without it coming off, but also, if there's any residue that leaks out the side, you can easily clean it off. Like I said, magic! This isn't the smallest palette setup that I've made, but it's still compact enough to easily fit in a pocket or bag, and you could always throw in a stubby little Ikea pencil and a hunk of kneaded or rubber eraser if you wanted to fully round out the kit. I'll also be throwing in a piece of wax paper on top of the paints themselves when shipping, since M. Graham paints really do stay super juicy, and I don't want to risk them going all chaos before you're ready. Anyway, that's it for me, folks. If you're a fan of bug farts, Bubba, or general tomfoolery, then please consider throwing me and the other AAC artists a like and subscribe while you're here. Until I see you next time, I wish you peace, love, and poots.